Guys, welcome back to the show. I'm joined in studio with Adam Cullen. Adam, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Ready? <laughs> I am. No, I'm definitely, definitely ready. Uh, look, so the um, what's on everyone's mind now at the moment is Cage where is CW175 up against uh, Mill Jaffari. I can't pronounce his surname so well, so I'm just, if it's wrong, please correct me. Yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. I don't know what to say, but it's irrelevant. <laughs> uh, I mean, how do you um how do you feel about the fight? Um, how do you see, what's your game plan? If you, you know, yeah, I mean, have you studied his studied his own um footwork? How what he's like in the cage? Have you seen his past fights? Yeah, yeah, I've watched his um his past fights. He's um yeah, he's he's got a, a few wins. Um, he trains out a GB top team, I think now, but I think he's trained a few, few other places as well. Um, he's a grappler. He's gonna come and try and grapple me, and um, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna sprawl and and I'm gonna knock him out, and it's, it's that simple. So his biggest advantage or strength will be on the ground, rather in comparison to on his, when his stand up when he's on his feet. Yeah, yeah, I think. Well, realistically, I'm better than him everywhere. Um, I know everyone says that. You know, everyone says that before fights don't need blah like. But I am better than him everywhere. I think he's gonna be reliant on taking me down and holding me down, or you know, taking me down and taking my back or something. But it's just not gonna happen. Um, he's gonna be shooting for my legs. I'm gonna sprawl on his head. And then I'm gonna smash his head in. It's as simple as that. You two have never crossed paths before. Um, ever been the same. Well, no, he pulled he pulled out on me actually. I was meant to fight him in September, but he pulled out already. So it was actually closer to the fight than this. They pulled out as well, if I remember. So let's hope he makes it there. Okay, he is. He's pulled out on you before, and for you as a fighter, mm -hmm. that's a big piss take. It's very really annoying. Um. Me. I've you know of course it's no secret that your teammate Shamrock BJJ because you guys are from the same uh, gym uh, next gen uh, uh, MMA in Liverpool mm. um, his uh, former opponent at Octagon MMA he um, uh, Jada Bukorny pulled down that on the show about two to three times or so um, uh, I mean is, yeah. is, the, is the feeling I, I do sense is the feeling that this guy going to try and do the same thing to you again for the second time Oh, I fucking hope not. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm putting it down to maybe, maybe that was that was a one off, but people who pull out of fights tend to pull out of fights regularly. I mean, I've never pulled out of one. All the lads that I know that I've never put, I've never pulled out of one. Um, tends to be the same people who um who like to pull out. But let's hope not. Let's hope he's brave. Um, let's hope he fancies his chances, and the um. He turns up to fight because I know I'm turning up. I'm turning up ready, hungry. And I'm turning up a, a man on a mission, ready to ready to put on a yeah. clinical performance. And we will be lucky enough to see your um that um first round, round one, fifteen second second knockout. Could be. You never know. <laughs> I hope like so. I pull out of a gun and I yeah, but that's not up to me, that's up to him, isn't it? Like I fight the same way every time and if they can't handle me for more than a minute, that's on them, isn't it? So let's see. Let's see how long he lasts. But yeah, I, I know what I'm going in there to do. Look, I've listened to a, a lot of your interviews in the past um, that you've done. Why is it, I mean, this kind of, not to go around in circles, but why is it a lot of fighters do kind of dodgy is it that you're just a very scary intimidating fighter because they they know the, that they're going to lose and they just don't want to dent their record but, I mean why is it they always feel the need that they just can't face you in the cage uh, I'm just a horrible fighter aren't I I mean there's a lot <laughs> easier people to get in there with than someone who's so aggressive like me and so so skilled and from such a highly regarded gym I mean you only have to look at the people I train with every single day to think that like 
I'm talented. Do you know what I mean? To so be hanging with them guys, and um, people just shit the woundies, don't they? At the end of the day, but um, yeah, this lad we signed the contract, so as far as I'm concerned, he's gonna be he's gonna be turning up, but he's gonna he's gonna find out quickly that there is levels to this game, and I am one hungry, hungry motherfucker to put on a, a show, and um. And show this lad they should never agree to fight me. As the first one speaking with you, and I always do this with, a, with an athlete or, or, or probably a fighter who I'm speaking to for the first time. But can you give just a bit of a backstory and background to you know yourself and how you came to as and what enticed you and encouraged you to get into mixed martial arts? Um, yeah, my my background basically was I always done sports. I always played footy, done. Athletics, done a bit of karate when I was young, when I was very young, and um, I was always just competitive in everything I'd done. And um, one day my brother bought a UFC game for um, for the Xbox UFC two thousand and nine, and I remember on that you unlocked um past fights for completing missions or something, and um, I remember watching them past fights, didn't even know that the UFC was a real thing or but what it entailed. And I remember watching these clips and just thinking, I'd be good at that. Mm. And that was it. From that day on, I was like, I'd be good at that. I'm going to do that. And yeah, I just decided. And then fucking 15 years later, or whatever it is, here we are. It's my whole my whole life. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just decided one day that that was going to be me. I'm going to be the best in the world. And 15 years into that journey of trying to be the best in the world. I uh, you know I look to your fight record. Um, in that in that division, I mean, can I say that it's not going to be long? Um, it won't be long until you are lightweight champion at Cage Warriors. Um, but I mean, going forward, what are other promotion? I mean, okay, there's the obvious one. There's the UFC. Um, but what other promotions would you as a like to venture into? I'm only interested in the UFC. The UFC is my next step. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not interested in any other promotions. I mean, there's cool ones out out there at the minute. Like I went to see Shamrock fighting Octagon. Um, last month in the um, Czech Republic, it was cool. Yeah, it was it was really cool. Like big big stadium, big events. But um, I'm made for the UFC. I'm gonna be a, gonna go with the UFC, and I'm gonna be a superstar. And um, I'm going to win the title. Like, at the end of the day, no one knows who the champions are of the other organisations, do they? It's all about the UFC. And, like, that's what I wake up every day and think about, wake up and think that, like, I'm doing this to be the UFC champion. Well, Page Warriors, long since, you know, they, uh, they've got the UFC fight pass in their corner. So, I think, so, especially for those coming from the UK and Ireland, they want to go to be catapulted to the UFC. Cage Warriors is almost like a stepping stone because I'm sure the UFC they do um, watch the Cage Warriors fights so of course um, uh, I think it does help that you are already in with fighting under a big brands such as Cage Warriors yeah I mean look at the track record what of the promotion has sent over 100 fighters to the UFC especially in Europe like it's a no brainer if you're fighting on other promotions trying to get to the UFC you, you, you're deluded because look, look what Cage Warriors have produced c- consistently um, I lost my train of thought here but I mean okay how's fight come going for the upcoming fight at um, CW175 quality yeah Um, every box has been checked every every um, bit of preparation has been done the rounds are pretty much done now. Um, coming towards the end, but um, yeah, the work's been put in, and I'm mentally and physically in in the right place to put on the best performance of my life, and really, really prove a point. Um, yeah, like I, I know just how good I am. I am, I am world class, and um, on twenty fifth of July, I'm going to show that, and I'm in the right place to to show that really really prove a point about just how dangerous I am
How's the weight cut been? I know that's usually one of the hardest, um, most frustrating um, parts of the weight of the fight camp. Yeah, no, um, really good. Been working with some um, some new people for that, um, but I'm well on track. I'm really happy. I know a lot of times at this point in camp, people are worrying about the weight cut and how much they've got to cut. But I'm ready. I could cut weight tomorrow. I am. I'm. I'm ready to to get in there. Everything's gone perfectly. No injuries. Nothing. Mentally, physically, ready. Weight perfect. Uh, it's, it's coming into a perfect storm. Next generation, you guys have a lot of big names in in your corner. There, there's Sherman, there's yourself, there's Paddy Pimlet, there's Liam Gittins, uh, and I I do know that even the Hardwick brothers, George and Harry, they do sometimes come over there to train to I think to spar and train with yourself a lot of the times. But mm. I mean. A gym like that, are there any other names that um are coming up through the ranks that we should be keeping a close watch for? Because it, it's... Uh, there's the, yeah. There's loads. There's loads. Like, a, what I'm excited about in this show, it's been a bit of a... um, bit of the same sort of names for the past few Cage Warriors Manchester shows. It's been me, Luke Riley, Liam Gittins, Nathan Fletcher. And this is a good time for the, the other lads that are on this card. Um, we've got Francis Breen, a fantastic striker, fantastic grappler, and um, flyweight. He's fighting again. Um, Connor Wilson, <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable striker, and a, and a nightmare for anyone at flyweight. He's fighting, and um, oh, Jack Jack Oxworthy just joined our gym, and um, he's phenomenal, really good. So we've got some other up and coming guys. You know earlier earlier um, stage of the professional career to us so it's good good for them to get a good good bit of shine on this um, on this show but consistently every professional in our gym is phenomenal do you know what I mean it's just the results speak for themselves like um, every pro every pro we've got has been um, doing damage on every um, every promotion they've been on like the gym the gym's flying and then that's been for years, and it's just just getting better, and like um, just getting to that point now where people are like going to be talking about these new names coming through, but like they've been around for years, the likes of your fans and Connors, um, and they're finally going to get the credit that they deserve, um, putting on these big, big now they're on these um big shows, it's um, it's exciting to see. Yeah, no, definitely. I have noticed, and I've said time and time again, that here in the UK, I mean, even for um fighters who, fighters who may not be that well known or promoters who may not be well that well known equally, they're, they've got a lot of talent because you, when you watch their shows, you, you kind of realise how entertaining the fighter is or how entertaining the event is. We've got a lot of good talent here at home, but what I don't really like is that the media don't really give them that the um, recognition that they deserve you know every weekend I do notice that a lot of the social media and the traffic is always geared towards what's happening in the UFC wherever they are yeah it's a very UK thing that isn't it everyone's interested in the um, the highest level I mean like there's UFC Manchester on the same weekend obviously and that's sold out instantly and then around the corner you've got a, a cage warriors event which is like it's like watching the next generation of the UFC isn't it and they never sell as many tickets anywhere near as many tickets it's always funny that um, it's like a hardcore thing to go and watch regional MMA isn't it but yeah, yeah. so it's always been a strange thing but when you go to the UFC you sell thousands of tickets but it's like if you that fighting for years and, and no one's interested it's, it's a bit mad but I mean like even being one of the more experienced cage warriors guys you get far more attention than you do than the guys we're just entering. It's just the way it goes. You've just got to cut your teeth, haven't you? In the um, in the world of MMA, and it'll all it'll all come eventually. Speaking of the UFC, um, I do see you as a fighter that would be very marketable over there. Um, but at the same time, well, how do you feel about trash talking and shit talking? <laughs> just I mean, I'm into it. I think it's funny. Yeah. It's all it's a laugh. End of yeah. the day, we're in the entertainment industry, aren't we? 
we're here to entertain people and get eyes on the sport. And if you don't sell tickets and people don't want to watch you fight, what value are you to anyone? Like people are all scream for like, oh, I should be getting paid this, should be getting paid that by these promotions. But no one's asked about them. No one wants to watch them fight. Like you, you bring the value, don't you? you? If you bring value, you'll get paid your value. And that, that that's what I see a lot. A lot in MMA, people are all complaining about how much they get paid. But I'm an MMA hardcore and I don't even want to watch them fucking fight. So why would anyone, anyone else want to watch them fight? A fighter like yourself, uh, even with all the wins you have under your belt, you're still, you're still young. Uh, would you have any, um, or what, what advice would you give to any newer and younger upcoming fighters? I think the only advice you can give to people is like you've got to commit your life to it. Like this is my life. Like I know people probably come on this show and say it all the time, but like I can't tell you stuff that I do outside of training MMA because I don't do anything like this is my life this is the only thing I care about and I think if you're a young up and coming fighter you need to understand that because if it's not your life you're going to come up against someone like me and then you're going to be in a fucking world of trouble aren't you do you know when people want to go out and want to party want to do this want to do that like the sport is so unforgiving even when you do commit your life to it like and the 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 level is just getting higher and higher and higher. So if like if you're coming into this game and you you're trying to make make a name for yourself, you've got to be all in. That's the only only advice I can give to anyone. Would you say it, it, this almost relates to like the what we're seeing on like the main stage at the moment, moment mainstream, the Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler situation, whereby we thought that Michael Ch that um, Conor McGregor was serious about getting back in the gym, training, getting ready for uh, um, competing or fighting Michael Chandler. But let me see uh, further footage online of him partying and drinking. You can't, you can't have one. You can't, you can't have both. Basically, it has to be one or the other. Yeah, but it's hard for me to speak on McGregor at the end of the day, isn't it? He's done everything I'm trying to do. Oh, so, yeah, like, yeah. it would be daft if I was to start slating what he is doing. But I also think he understands that, and that's why the fight hasn't happened yet. Like, he's not got to the point where he's all in, or, like, he's been injured or whatever, and he can't give it his 100%. He understands the level he's fighting at and the performances he needs to put on. Like, obviously, his last two fights, three fights, he's been beat. Like he knows that he's got to um, come back and put on a masterclass for people to, you know, give him his roses again. So like, he's he's trying to be a hundred percent, isn't he? And come back, a hundred percent, all in, and show everyone. So I, I can't blame him for for not for not doing it. But at the end of the day, it's also hard for me to go. Oh, we should be doing this. He should be doing that because I'm not Conor McGregor. I'm not world famous. He put he can't leave his fucking house, can he? Without People know who he is, and he's got millions and millions and millions of pounds in the bank. And like, we're like fighting, struggling, aren't we? It's easy for us to get up every day. When do you know what I mean? But once you've made it, like, who who knows? I'm I'm not in his shoes. I, it would be unfair for me to say. Last but not least, um, no means least. Any two things I'd like to ask you. Uh, the first one is any fighters you like to call out and the second one is any shout outs you like to give right now I'm not I'm not calling anyone out I'm just ready for um, a meal on the on the 25th um, he's the only thing I'm thinking about like my life doesn't exist after the 25th of July it's all about that day and it's all about smashing him um, and then just from there just shout out to Everyone who's believed in me and everyone who's backed me up until this point continues to back me. Um, I've had a few poor performances over the last year, and um, I'm ready to ready to right them wrongs and show show everyone they were right for believing in me and just how good I am and where I'm going and make everyone make everyone believe again. Adam, thank you so much for coming on the show this evening. And I appreciate your time. I know you've had a very, very long and busy day and a lot of people are chasing you for your time, as I said earlier. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you've watched to the this point of the episode, th first of all, thank you very much. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And you can also catch the audio version of this episode on Spotify, iTunes and 
and Google Podcasts. And once again, thank you so much for coming on. And good luck for the 21st. Thanks for having me. Thank you.